not too late for the government to do the right thing and avoid one of the largest strikes in Canadian history. People in this country are watching as tens of thousands of federal employees are in a position to walk off the job. Welcome to About That, I'm Lauren Bird, in for Andrew Chang. It feels like we're on the edge of what could be a major moment, and we have questions. How substantial could a strike like this be? Which services could be hit the hardest, and how might it affect you? Union President Chris Aylward said that members of the country's largest public service union voted overwhelmingly in favor of a strike mandate yesterday. We're talking about PSEC, the Public Service Alliance of Canada. That vote means roughly 123,000 public servants who make up what's called the Treasury Board of Canada are in a legal position to strike. And they're not alone. They're joining 35,000 other PSEC members at the Canada Revenue Agency who are under a different bargaining group and already voted for a strike mandate last week. They'll be able to strike as of tomorrow. Now that's more than 150,000 employees total. But something important to note, 35,000 of them are considered essential workers, which means if there is a strike, they'll have to continue working. Even still, all told, it's more than 100,000 people who could walk off the job. To give you a sense of what kind of work PSEC employees do, it's a wide range all across the country. So a strike could have sweeping implications for and interruptions to a pretty huge part of our everyday lives. The processing of uh, immigration uh, applications, uh, em employment insurance applications, uh, the Canadians will see, you know, certainly uh, services like, you know, the grain won't be exported to possibly delays at airports, borders. Airports and borders fall under the essential worker category. They would still be staffed during a strike, but there would be fewer people working and you could count on longer waits. The public doesn't typically react well to union members um, who, who initiate work stoppages. Um, we're all being squeezed, at least um, many, um, uh, many of us in, in, uh, in Canada today are being squeezed by inflation uh, and feeling the pressures of that. PSAC employees have been without a contract since 2021. And one of the sticking points of negotiations is money. The past two years have been hard for workers everywhere. The cost of living has hit a 40-year high and people are struggling. Every day, we see that our dollar doesn't go as far as it did. PSAC members are feeling squeezed along with everyone else. Aylward says most members in this dispute make between $40,000 and $65,000 a year, and they're struggling with the high cost of living. PSEC is asking for a 4.5% annual salary increase over three years. The government hasn't come close to matching that. And PSAC members at the CRA want a retroactive wage increase of 4.5% in 2021, 8% in 2022, and 8% in 2023, saying that's in line with inflation and what private sector workers have seen in the past few years. So there's a lot to unpack here. And to help get through it, we're joined by David Canfield, coordinator of the Labor Studies Program and associate professor at the University of Manitoba. Hi, David. Hi. So, I mean, they've voted for strike action. How quickly could this actually happen? Well, this is going to take some time because the two sides are going to go back to the bargaining table. There's two big groups of workers here. The largest the people who work under the Treasury Board jurisdiction. They have negotiations scheduled through the 14th. And then this Canada Revenue Agency, they have negotiations, I believe, scheduled 17th to the 20th of April. So they're going to go back to the table and continue negotiations. But a strike could happen in the not too distant future. Uh, the strike authorization vote is good for 60 days, uh, which goes, I think, till the 10th of June. So there's a window then. Negotiations can continue, but a strike, or for that matter, a lockout, could happen within that time frame. If service workers actually do go on strike, like, who is, what's affected here? So about uh, something like a quarter of the Treasury Board workforce and a very small number of people at the Canada Revenue Agency would not be on strike if strikes do happen, but other workers would be withdrawing their labor and that would mean that the services that they deliver to people in this country would uh, be disrupted, uh, whether that means applying for a passport or, um, you know, the processing of tax uh, returns, all that kind of work 
um, wouldn't be happening. And so that would certainly affect some people. And there'd also be particular groups um, that might have an econo- more of an economic impact. Uh, there are some PSAC members who work uh, at ports, for example, or for the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and them, their withdrawing of their labor could have, uh, you know, broader implications. So what, what are those implications? Well, there certainly could be some disruption to potentially to some of the shipping from, from ports as a result of that, or some of the, the work that goes on in, in ports. Um, you know, some of the food processing could be affected by workers withdrawing their labor at the Canada uh, Food Inspection Agency. But for the most part, it would be other kinds of services that would be affected by, by these workers striking. Um, and it all depends on how much people would be interacting with the federal government, how much they would notice this kind of job action affecting them. So it's going to kind of depend on what services you use um, and likely those ones that are kind of immediate are the ones that we're going to really notice. And, you know, some people will be very happy if there's a strike of the Canada Revenue Agency, uh, either, you know, because it would lead to a delay in the processing of, of tax returns. Other people, if they're waiting for a refund, might not be so happy. Can you put this into context for me? How significant is this? 2004 was the last time there was a major PSAC strike at the federal government. 1991 was the one before that, and there was one in 1980. Uh, but what's significant about this is it's mainly, although not only, about wages falling behind inflation. And that's something that lots of working people are experiencing right now. Um, so this is because these workers are unionized. They have the right to try to negotiate collectively right, around their wages and working conditions. And so a strike would be, in large part, a response to what union leaders feel is an unacceptably low wage offer. Uh, and since, again, a lot of people are experiencing their, the buying power of their wage is being eaten away at by higher inflation these days, I think this speaks to this broader issue. And it's not just a Canadian thing. This is happening internationally. For example, we can see there have been lots of strikes in Britain um, and in other parts of Europe as a result of what people are experiencing with the, uh, the cost of living. There are, you know, other provincial unions who um, are coming up on the end of their public servant contracts. Could this pre- uh, set a precedent for for those talks? Absolutely. I mean, I think other public sector workers who are in negotiations will be watching the negotiations that the federal government's involved in. And so the kinds of, uh, you know, the terms and conditions that are reached as a result of this um, set of negotiations could affect negotiations that provincial governments and provincial government workers' unions are are having. And that would be true for wages. It might also be true for one of the other major issues that's on the bargaining table, which is around the union's attempt to get collective agreement language around remote work. So to actually have some clear frameworks, some clear rights and, and guidelines about how remote work arrangements would be handled. What do you think the likelihood is that we could actually see a strike? Uh, so although most collective bargaining negotiations in Canada end without a strike, you know, strikes are not uncommon. And I think that it's, it is certainly possible. There certainly is some pressure uh, on union leaders from members who, you know, really feel that after everything they've done to provide services to the public through the pandemic, you know, they really feel that they deserve a fair wage increase. And a lot of people are very frustrated by the way the federal government unilaterally required people to return to the office who've been working remotely, whether that was rational or not for the work in question. So there some, some workers are pretty frustrated about the way that's been handled. We will definitely be watching. Thanks so much, David. Happy to help.